you have your Bibles this morning, if you'll turn with me over to the book of Matthew. We're going to look at the book of Matthew this morning. Matthew chapter 21, in fact, is where we're going to be at. Matthew chapter 21. We've been, for several weeks, looking at um, doors in all of our lives. Um, and I have struggled this week to make what I want to share with you a door. Uh, I don't know if we can make it a door or not, but we'll see if we can make it a door. And if it's not a door, then it won't be a door, and we'll finish our doors next week. Um, but uh, next week, um, I plan on uh, wrapping up our doors sermon series that we've been studying for several weeks um, on Easter Sunday morning. And I hope that you're here with us, and uh, you invite some of your family and friends so that we can share with them and celebrate with them the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 21, this is a traditional reading that we would normally read on Palm Sunday. Uh, this is what uh, Pastor Jason referred to a little bit earlier uh, before we started worship this morning. If you would look with me in Matthew chapter 21, verse 1. And they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna! To the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Surely, if you were writing this story, and this wasn't an actual account of Jesus's life. Surely, if we were putting this together. The last thing that we would select for our king to ride into the city would be a donkey. Maybe we would pick a white stallion, a white, beautiful stallion, and we would have our Savior sitting on top of this stallion riding into Jerusalem. Or maybe we would pick a traditional mode of transportation, then maybe it would be a camel, or maybe something else. But surely, the last thing that I would suspect all of us would pick would be a donkey. I don't know if you've ever been around a lot of animals or not, but uh, donkeys are probably the most stubborn animal that I have ever seen or ever been around before. And if I were writing Jesus' triumphal entry just before his death and then resurrection, um, probably the last thing I would have chosen for Jesus to ride into the city would have been a stubborn donkey. But this very first truly public acknowledgement that Jesus was the Messiah, where they all shouted Hosanna, where they were all saying, uh, blessed is he who comes in the Lord. They acknowledged that Jesus was the son of David and they were shouting Hosanna in the highest. It was in this moment that Jesus had paved the way God chosen to fulfill his plan by Jesus riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Well, what is the meaning of all of this and what does it look like for us looking back on this passage that happened some 2,000 years ago? But one thing that I definitely think that this story in itself approves is recorded in all four Gospels, one of the few stories that is in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But this story unmistakably proves that Jesus was 
the Messiah. Now just imagine if we were to watch the President of the United States arrive on the back of a donkey. It wouldn't happen. The President comes in with all pomp and all circumstance. Or imagine a king riding in to the streets of England. Or Caesar arriving and the announcement that would follow ahead of him. We wouldn't have written this story this way. But I believe that there is another message in this story and the importance of this story and why I wanted to look at it for us on this Palm Sunday. This story that I really believe proves to us that if God can use a donkey, then he can use one of us. If God can work through the life of a donkey to announce his arrival, then certainly God can use all of us. How does the donkey, though, become fit for a king? How does this little colt, the foal of a donkey, become fit for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? How can then we be made useful for our Savior's purpose and for our Savior's, um, uh, for our Savior's will as well? There's a few things that I want to share with you this morning. Um, but the most important thing from this passage of Scripture in Matthew 21 and then from Luke, uh, Mark, and John as well, is this donkey was selected by God. Just in the same way that each and every one of us have been selected by God. God prearranged for this donkey to be at this moment in time. It was set up over 550 years before this moment. It had been prophesied about. It had been foretold by the prophets that this was actually going to happen. God prearranged this. Take a look with me again at verse 1, 2, and 3. It says, As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there. He didn't say you're going to have to search for a donkey. He didn't say go find me a donkey. He said, I know that this has already been prearranged by God. And I want you to go get the donkey that God chose to be there at this very moment. Don't search for it. It's already tied up there with her colt there by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them. And he will send them right away. Clearly, Jesus made arrangements for this to happen. Years and years and years, centuries before this moment, God knew that this was about to happen when He framed the foundation of the world. And He prepared this to happen. And so, God made that donkey to be there at that moment, ready for His service. The donkey was selected ahead of time. The point is this specific donkey had been set aside for a noble purpose, just like every one of us. God has chosen us. God has called us. God has set us aside. God has prearranged for each of us to be used for his service. The prophecy foretold of it in Zechariah chapter 9. You can look it up later on. About 550 years before this moment, he prophesied this little donkey was going to be there. God had a plan for this little donkey. And if God had a plan for this donkey, how much more does God have a plan for every one of our lives? God has called you. And if he has called you, then God plans to use you. In fact, there's a scripture in John chapter 15 verse 16 it says you did not choose me but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit fruit that will last Jesus is saying you didn't choose me I chose you in the same way that he chose this donkey in Matthew chapter 21 God chose you God is ready to use you he chose us and then Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. 
See, the scripture tells us that God has already prepared works for us to do. God has already chosen each one of us. And if God has chosen us, just like he did with this donkey, then shouldn't we give ourselves to what God is asking of us? Now, for some of us, this might be new thinking. This might be thinking that we've never heard of, or this might be preaching that we've never even thought about before. But I promise you, if God can lay out and plan the life of a donkey centuries before it happens, then God can do the exact same thing and has done it for every single one of us. We have been chosen not only for blessing, but for God's service to do the works God has, has planned for each one of us. Now you might be thinking, I'm not much more than a donkey. I'm not a king. I'm not anything special. I don't have any noble statue. I, I don't, there's nothing special about me. You see, to God that doesn't matter. Because the psalmist tells us that he knit us together in our mother's wombs. Preparing a work for each and every one of us. God knows you and God chose you. He selected you. In the same way that he did this donkey. Just, just think about that. The creator of the universe chose you for his work. Not only was um, this donkey selected, but this donkey had to be sanctified. He had to be set apart for a special youth. He, he had to be preserved. Mark chapter 11 tells us, that you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. This wasn't a donkey that had been put in the field plowing the fields. This wasn't a donkey that was a normal taxi for use every single day. This wasn't a donkey that was of use to anybody. This was a donkey that had been set aside, waiting his entire life for Jesus to come and ride him into Jerusalem. So that others could wave the palm branches and declare that Jesus was the son of David. To declare that Jesus was the Messiah. This donkey had a specific purpose for his life. He was set aside. He was preserved. All throughout scriptures, we find God telling his people, I have preserved you for a work. I have sanctified you. I have set you apart for a special work. And in that manner, God too has called each of us, preparing a work for all of us to do. He has set us aside. He has preserved us. He allowed each of us in our lives to go through the things that we've gone through in our lives so He could take those things, redeem them, and then turn them around and use them for His glory. Now granted, some of those dark moments in our lives, we didn't like it when we were going through those things. We were uncomfortable in those moments. We prayed that God would deliver us from those moments. But God led us through the paths that He led us through so that He could take those things, sanctify them, so He can use them just in the same manner that God did with this little donkey. God has chosen you, preserved you, set you apart for His service. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21 tells us, If a man cleanses himself from wickedness, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the Master, and prepared to do any good work. It is more than necessary if you are a follower of Christ. It is a requirement to preserve our time, to preserve our energy, to, pre to preserve the resources that God has given to us to use for His kingdom, to use for His glory, to use for His purpose. But so often what we want to do as humans is give God the leftovers. To give God our leftover time. To give God our leftover resources. To give God our leftover energy. To just whatever we have left, God, that's what I'm going to give to you. But what God is asking of us 
is exactly what was required of this little donkey's life. To give God everything that we have whenever He asks of it. So that we can be too sanctified, preserved, set apart for His service to help accomplish His will here on earth. Now take a look at verse 7 in Matthew 21. It says, They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on him, and Jesus sat on him. You see, the donkey had to be prepared for God to work. In the same way that we have to be prepared for God's work. They prepared this donkey for Jesus to ride on him. So the donkey could lift Jesus up so all the crowds could see Jesus riding into Jerusalem. You have been prepared for God's work. God led you through the roads of your life, preparing you. We too have to be prepared. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 tells us this. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that, that you have in you. 2 Timothy 2 15 tells us, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. When God calls you, it is our responsibility to spend time preparing ourselves for what God has in store for us. We might not know what that is, but we have to surrender ourselves to spending time in the word, in God's Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, seeking God, and in prayer to Him, seeking God and His will. Just in the same way this donkey was prepared in verse 7, we too have to be prepared. Prepa we too have to be prepared for what God has for us. And the last thing this morning, this donkey had to have been satisfied. Because I don't know if you, again, know anything about donkeys. But donkeys aren't the easiest things to bring into submission. They have a mind of their own. I remember seeing my grandpa, I was raised with horses, and my grandpa trying to take a donkey and to bring it into submission, and it wasn't a nice thing to watch. But we don't read of that here in this passage. We don't read that this donkey was anything other than satisfied for the work that he had been chosen to do here with Jesus Christ. That scripture in 2 Timothy 2.15 reminds us to present ourselves to God. Just the way this donkey was presented to Jesus Christ. Present yourself to God. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says this. Therefore I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to God. And if God has chosen you then that is exactly what we should be. We should be presenting ourselves to God. In view of the mercy that He has given to each one of us, we have to present ourselves to Him to be submissive to His will, just like this donkey was. The donkey was satisfied to play a humble part, just a small role of allowing Jesus to ride on His back. All the donkey did is give Jesus a ride, lifted Jesus up so the crowds could see Him. But the donkey was satisfied with that. Whatever God has chosen for us, whatever God has called us to do, we have to be satisfied in that. In knowing that the king, the creator of the universe, who just spoke things into existence, called each and every one of us. We are to lift Jesus up. Galatians 6.13. Galatians 6.13 says, May I never boast except in the cross of of our Lord Jesus Christ. May I never boast in what God has called me to do. Instead, may I boast in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This donkey didn't bring attention to himself. He brought Jesus, he brought all the attention to Jesus in lifting Jesus up. This donkey wasn't focused on what he was doing that day. He was just doing what he was asked by Jesus himself. That has to be our service as well. That we would be focused on God's work that He has called each of us to do. Looking at this passage and with our life, we can easily see that donkeys really aren't that great. 
not a high value on donkeys. They don't sell for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. They don't sleep in stables. We've spent thousands of dollars on them. They're often just let out to pasture in a very meager barn. But that's what Jesus chose. Centuries before this moment, God paved the way. He called this donkey to His service. He prepared this donkey for His service. And the donkey made himself available when he was called upon. And so I challenge each of you this morning. In just a few minutes as we go about our life and as we move on to whatever each of us have planned for the rest of the day. To be willing, like this donkey. To allow God to use us like this donkey. Whenever God calls you, and He has. Whenever God asks of you, and He has, then to be willing to do whatever God asks of you. Donkeys are stubborn. They're usually pretty small. They're smelly. They're not able to do a whole lot. But Jesus chose a donkey, passed by the white stallion, passed by the camel, and any other mode of transportation. But He chose a donkey. <coughs> You might be thinking, I'm not a white stallion. I'm not a great method for God to use. But God still desires to use you because He selected you. And to prove that He selected you, He chose to die for you. Not only to die, but to then arise from the grave just a mere few days after this. To prove your worth and to prove the calling and selection that each of us have on our lives. So, are you prepared this morning to respond to whatever God might be saying to you? Whatever God might be asking of each of us this morning? God has called you. We'll stand and sing here just in a few minutes. And what I want to ask you to do when we stand and sing is to say to God as we sing and in prayer, God, I'm here, I'm ready, I'll, I'll do whatever you ask of me. Take me just as I am. Cleanse me. And use me in the way that you use this small donkey. Would you stand with me this morning? Father, we come to you this morning. We give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for your presence here with us this morning. We give you thanks that you have called and chosen each one of us. We thank you, Father, that in the way that you chose this small animal that might seem inconsequential, inconsequential to some other people, you proved that you have called us, that you have selected us, that you have chosen us, and you paid for us. You bought us a price. Father, we thank you for that. God, I just ask that you would anoint each one of us. That you would touch us, that you would speak to us in these few moments that we have together. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your presence. And thank you for your calling on our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we sing this morning, let your prayer to God be, God, I'm willing to do whatever you've asked of me. God, I'm here. I am yours. I will do whatever you need. Let's sing this morning. Just as I am.
be seated. One of the greatest things that we can celebrate as a congregation, outside of someone uh, giving their life to Jesus Christ and accepting His free gift of salvation, is being able to watch somebody be baptized. Now, being baptized, we believe the scripture, this, and as we interpret the scripture, we believe the scripture teaches us that uh, being baptized it has nothing to do on our gift, uh, no bearing on our gift of salvation. It does not determine whether we spend eternity in heaven or we spend an eternity in hell. Our baptism is simply being obedient to Jesus Christ, following his example in baptism, and being buried and raised to walk in newness of life. When you come to Jesus Christ, you become a new creature. The scripture is very clear. It tells us the old is gone and the new has come. And baptism is symbolic of burying the old and then being raised to walk in newness of life. And so Angelina is going to come this morning and uh, she has accepted Christ as her Savior and she wants to follow the Lord's example in baptism. Angelina, because of your profession of faith and because your willingness to follow Jesus as example in baptism, it is a joy and privilege to now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be called as you've called each one of us. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to respond, to give our life to you, to be sanctified, set apart, and called uh, to do the things that you've asked us to do. Lord, as we go from here this morning, let us continue in celebration of being able to shout, Hosanna, glory to God in the highest, glory to the Son of David, glory to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Bless us as we go from here. Continue speaking to us, we pray. For it's in Jesus' name, amen. amen.